Okay, then I think we're uh, ready to start. And uh, today I will uh, finalize the part of the curriculum regarding forecasting. Then we will continue with the chapter three in the textbook, which is about aggregate planning. Uh, also, I would remind you that uh, next week, next Tuesday, we will have uh, a guest uh, lecture. Uh, this guy, Harald Mum from the University of Wismar, will uh, have a talk. I think he probably will use uh, uh, two uh, class hours and uh, have a talk about theory and practice on vehicle routing optimization. And this is uh, an optimization problem which is uh, related to those problems we will uh, uh, look at probably uh, in, uh, in two weeks and also later in this course. Uh, where we can find for, uh, for some of these types of optimization problems, we are able to use some um, uh, software, some optimizers that can actually uh, identify the exact uh, optimal solution. But when the problems get uh, uh, complex, this is uh, not possible to, to find the exact optimal solution within a reasonable searching time and then we might have need some, uh, uh, some techniques to try to identify good solution, which is not necessarily the optimal or the best one, because we can never prove that. And these types of problem, vehicle routing optimization, uh, is uh, one such type of problem, which can really get really complex when you add some, uh, uh, some more aspects than the, the, real, uh, the, the very simple uh, uh, very, very simple type of, of this uh, optimization problem. So this guy, Harald Moon from uh, University of Wismar, will have a talk, uh, a guest lecture next Tuesday on that topic. And then in two weeks we will continue on the <coughs> curriculum in, in, uh, uh, in chapter three. Uh, also remember uh, assignment one, uh, due date is today, or actually it is by eight o'clock tomorrow morning, because I, when I get to job, Tomorrow I will uh, will have them and I will uh, will check who has uh, has delivered, uh, and then I hopefully will be able to uh, evaluate these uh, assignments and give you some uh, well, short feedback uh, within uh, uh, at least within uh, the, uh, the the end of of this week. And uh, as I have mentioned before, this assignment number one is a pass or fail assignment, and the other two assignments, which will uh, the first one will be present presented in, in a short while. They will actually also count for 10% of the final degree in, in this course. Okay, then uh, we can have a look at assignment number two, which is uh, activated in front there now. I think I uploaded it, uh, uh, well, the problem uh, text. Um, last week, but uh, now there is also a uh, room for delivery of this assignment number two. And as you will see, the submission date here should be Tuesday, October 15th, so it's four weeks from now, and uh, as usual, you will, if you want to, to work in uh, night time, uh, it's also possible to do that, so I should have it by Wednesday morning. Uh, and I will uh, very shortly present the problems here because we haven't uh, presented all the topics on, on the lectures uh, so far. We started on, uh, uh, on this uh, part about forecasting for seasonal series. Uh, I started uh, last week showing the winter's method. Uh, and this is about uh, forecasting by using this winter's uh, method, which I will continue and, and present uh, uh, well in, in a short way while uh, today. So here you will continue on the problem about forecasting the PlayStation 2 in the early 90s. Uh, but now instead of using regression analysis, you should use these winter methods to uh, try to make forecast which is better fitted for these types of seasonal problems. And as you probably have uh, or have concluded or will conclude if you haven't finished uh, uh, finished this um, the first assignment uh, yet um, the PlayStation 2 is a typical Christmas gift which has l uh, 
very high demand in November and December and not so high demand in, uh, in, the, in the other months. Uh, so here we will rather use this, this winter's method for seasonal problems to try to forecast this, the sales of, of this product, the PlayStation 2. Uh, yeah, data was of course from 2002, 3, 4 and 5 and here first on A you should use data for the two first years to create a model and forecast the demand for 2004 and then you should assume the smoothing constant of this value, 0 0.2, update the estimates, the gradient and the seasonal factors for each month in 2004 when the demand of the previous month is known. So here in A you should make a forecast for the full year in December 2003 or in the start of January 2004, make a forecast for the full year. In B make a forecast for one month ahead and then uh, register the demand and make a new forecast for the next month and so on. Then compare the forecast in, with these two methods A and B and make some comments on the result. Uh, on D show a graph with the values of the gradient, the variable G during 2004 and as you hopefully remember the gradient is, uh, uh, is the uh, the slope of the line, how much it will increase or eventually decrease from one month or one, uh, one period to, to the next one. And then the question, what can we conclude about the demand for this product by looking at the graph? And then on E, use the data available by the end of 2004 to make a forecast for the last year in this uh, series, which is 2005. And then use the data available at the end of 2004, which is the uh, data you get on problem B by updating month for month, and the data you will have at the end of 2004. And then make a forecast for the last year, 2005, and also make some comments on, on that result. Uh, second problem is about aggregate planning which uh, we will uh, start presenting uh, later today and then continue on in two weeks. Uh, here we have different strategies. One is called the chase demand or zero inventory demand. Another one is called the constant workforce. And a third one is a solution by linear programming, which is a optimization uh, uh, problem, uh, which can be solved to optimality by using a solver, which we will show in, in this course using the solver called Lingo. Um, so uh, I will not go very much into details here because we haven't actually presented all these uh, topics uh, yet, but uh, you should be aware of them. You will now get some data for the forecast, which we can assume is uh, rather uh, exact, and this is will be now the uh, expected demand for each of the month here, but we can see that now we don't have a fixed uh, rate. We will have uh, different uh, demand for different uh, periods. And we will also need to consider the number of production days. In February, not that many production days. Uh, January, May 22, and March and April 21, and June 20, and so on. So we have different number of production days, we have different forecasts, and we should now make production plans with different strategies that will fit to this particular forecast and the number of production days. Get some information here to be able to calculate the production of one worker per day which is useful for making such forecast. And here, the historical data. Uh, last year, 125,000 units in 250 working days and on average 1,000 employees. So you should use this historical data to try to find the production per, per worker per day and use that information to make the forecast or m to make the production plan according to the different strategies. And you will also get some costs here. Cost of hiring, $300. Firing, $600. And also cost of storing inventory. If you have 
uh, if you are producing more than the actual demand, demand is, then you need to store it for one month, and then you will estimate that to $50 here. And this is the cost considered in this example. And also some other information here. 1,000 uh, 1, workers employed at the end of December and an ingoing stock of 2,000 units. And you should also plan with a, a stock, as a, some kind of safety stock of 2,000 units at the end of the planning period. So develop production plans first with the so-called chase or zero inventory strategy, then with a constant workforce strategy, and then by using linear programming and solve it using Lingo, as you can see in these two hairs. And then analyze and compare the different solutions and do some uh, changes in the uh, remaining uh, sub-problems here. Try to see what is happening if you are changing the values of the different, uh, um, well, the different parameter values and also do some changes to, to the problem and solve it to optimality by using the Lingo optimizer system. So, uh, as mentioned, this is uh, now uh, uploaded in Fronter and uh, unactivated there. So when you are finished with assignment number one, you should at least start as soon as possible to look at these problems of uh, uh, in, in assignment number two. And uh, at least uh, uh, the forecasting, the first problem, should be possible to, to solve uh, after this lecture, where I will finalize presenting the winter's forecasting uh, method for a seasonal series. So let's now continue on forecasting and just have a very short repetition first. We uh, remember that we have seen different types of forecasting methods for stationary series, which is the case where you actually don't have any system here. You can just see that the demand is more or less uh, random. One month it might be at this level, another month at this level, and so on. And you don't see any, any system here, so here you should try to find a value which is the expected demand, which can be used for forecasting for the coming month. Which might be the line or the demand which is the, the average here between at least. Uh, the average of a certain number of previous periods. We looked at different ways of forecasting in these types, which we call uh, of forecasting here, which we call the stationary series. One is the moving average, which means that you take the average of the demand for a certain number of periods. And then if you get when you get new data, you just uh, discard the oldest data and add the newest data and find the average. Uh, we also looked at the exponential smoothing method, which gave some kind of weight on the latest demand compared to the latest forecast. So when you had a new data point here, you should adjust this uh, expected demand or the forecast according to that one, uh, which was a, a weight which we call the smoothing constant. Uh, on the latest demand compared to the latest forecast. And then we continue on what we call the trend-based method, or we also looked at two different methods there. When we have a trend, we still will have some kind of uncertainty, so you could not forecast exactly the demand, but here you can clearly see that the trend is increasing you will probably have a higher demand in the next period than you had in the previous period. So here, the, uh, well, the aim is to try to find a line that is best fitted to these points and find the formula of the line that can now be the, uh, be the, the, the trend line which can be used for forecasting into the future. Here we looked at two different methods. One is the regression analysis, which uh, is also part of your assignment number one, and the other one is related to the exponential smoothing method. And it's also then called the double exponential smoothing. 
Uh, and the particular type of double exponential smoothing we looked at is called the Holtz method. Here we had two different variables to uh, keep track on. One is the value of the series, the value of the point uh, of the, the end point of the line at time zero, which might be today or the time we are actually using for forecasting. And another one is the gradient, which is the slope of the line. How much does the line increase or eventually decrease from one period to the next? And by using these methods, we can easily just continue the line into the future and then use that value for forecasting into the future. If we, <coughs> we assume that the uh, that the, the, the trend will continue with the same uh, rate into the future. Of course, it will not into if we take uh, well, go further into far into the future. There will always be some development here, but in in the close future, we can assume that the trend will continue with with the same rate. So here, trend-based method. We looked at the regression analysis and the double exponential smoothing, in particular the Holtz method. And then one third type of, uh, um, of forecasting method is according to seasonal series, when you have different seasons for products, which is typical for, uh, well, winter seasons, for example, ski equipment will usually sell more in the winter in, than in the summer. You have lots of different uh, products which will sell more in the summer and in the, in the winter. And we have in assignment number one also looked at the, well, the PlayStation, which is a typical Christmas gift, which will have a very high increase of the demand in November and December compared to the previous years. So here by, um, by looking at uh, seasonal problems, we could have a situation which looks like this. And we can try to develop uh, some seasonal factors that will tell that we, in some of the periods within a full season, a full season might be one full year, and then the periods could be quarters or months or eventually any other time period within a full season, which usually will be a year, then we can find that in the first period you will have one percentage above the average in the second period, one another percentage above or below the average and so on. And here we could find the average value here and find seasonal factors for each of the periods within a full season. We looked at two different methods for these types of problem. One was called the simple method or quick and dirty method in, in the slides, which was quite easy. Just calculate the seasonal factors for the, uh, for the same periods in, in different years and, and find the average. We looked also at what we call the N period MA, M per uh, N period moving average, which was some kind of, uh, well, uh, more advanced moving averages uh, method, which also was able to identify seasonal factors and use the latest data, the latest historical data to, to, uh, uh, to update when you get new data, then the method should be updated. And <coughs> I also showed, or at least I uploaded in front there one example where you used regression analysis to try to find the slope of a line when the seasons were varying around a trend line. So it's not necessary seasonal factor on a constant line, but you might have a trend line here and have seasonal factors around that one. So here you can both have a trend line increasing or decreasing and seasonal variation along that trend line. So the n period moving averages could be used on 
uh, to find uh, what we call the de-seasonalized data, and then we can use that data to uh, on the de-seasonalized series to actually predict a trend line. And the new method, which is called the Winters method, which is a part of your second assignment, which I will continue showing uh, today, will be another way to try to calculate a trend line, seasonal factors, and also the what we call the value of the series, which is the, the current endpoint of the line here. So I will show more examples. First, some theory on that method, and then I will go more into details on uh, on examples on, on this Winters method. <coughs> um, yeah, let's try to show it here with the graph. We have some data. more like this. Uh, and we should now try to find a first a trend line and also seasonal factors, which should make, make us uh, make it possible to make uh, to find um, uh, both the trend line and the seasonal factor, which should uh, make it possible to just continue into the future with the same slope of the trend line and also with the same se seasonal factors and make it possible to to create forecast into the future which both take the seasons and the trend into consideration so last week i presented the formulas i will just repeat the formulas for for this uh, uh, which is used for this uh, different uh, uh, parameters in, in this method. Uh, first of all, we should find out what is the number of periods, what we call the n, And if a season is a year, and we're talking about monthly demand, then the number of periods will be 12. There are 12 months in one year. So uh, if we are talking about quarters, then of course the number of periods is uh, four, four quarters in, in a year. So it's, uh, it's uh, very important to, to keep track of that the periods are uh, the month or, or the quarters or eventually weeks and season are actually a full year. Uh, we talk about the value of the series which is has the parameter s and then the value of the series in period number t will be found by looking at the exact demand for that uh, for, for that period and multiply by the smoothing constant we call alpha. So the series value will be the demand divided by the seasonal factors for that particular season. Which means the S value is the end point of the line, this value, not necessarily the demand, uh, the exact demand, because the value here, which is, is the, the base which you should use to continue the line and also to calculate the forecast uh, by using the, uh, the seasonal factors. So here, similar to the, uh, to the uh, exponential smoothing, or the single and the double uh, exponential smoothing, you will have a smoothing constant alpha, which is usually around 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 around that value, multiply by the newest demand adjusted by the seasonal factor, and then plus one minus alpha, which is the importance of the previous forecast shown by the S of T minus one plus the gradient, the G of T minus one. The previous value of the series and the previous gradient. 
which means that if you now have a new data point here and have in, uh, updated this uh, series, the previous value of the series is this point and the previous value of the gradient is the increase of the line from one period to the next one. So this is the formula to use for updating the series and we will have a similar formula to update the gradient G where we use another smoothing constant called the beta multiplied by the new increase of the series which is the difference between the new value and the previous value and you have to add one minus beta and multiply by the previous value of the gradient. So here, similar, you have the, uh, the beta and the alpha, the smoothing constant, are the importance of the newest data, and one minus alpha or beta is the importance of the previous data or the previous forecast. Similar, now we have to increase, that we have to, to inclu include one more factor, which is the seasonal factor, called the C of T. And there we will use a gamma, a new smoothing constant, multiplied by the new demand, D of T, and adjust by the seasonal factor. Uh, or divide by the, the value of the series, actually, S of t, to get the seasonal factor for the latest demand, multiplied by the smoothing constant gamma, and then, as usual, add one minus the smoothing constant and the previous value of that particular seasonal factor. To make a forecast, for one particular period, and then we use this Greek letter tau, uh, which is one if we are making a forecast for the next period, and two if we are making a forecast for two period in, uh, in advance, and, and so on. The forecast will now be the value of the series plus the tau value, number of periods in advance, we are making the for forecast, multiplied by the gradient. But now we need to adjust by the seasonal factor for the period we are going to forecast, which is can be denoted as C for T plus tau and minus so if we are now making a forecast for period number 5 in a 4 period year, it will be the seasonal factor for season number 1. T plus tau and then minus n to make sure that you are making for, uh, using the seasonal factor for the period you are making a forecast for. Uh, the problem or to, to make this, uh, uh, to, to start this uh, forecasting uh, method or winter's method, we need to have initial values. And then we have an initialization procedure, also explained in the textbook, uh, which means that we, uh, we need uh, initial estimates for both the series, the slope, and the seasonal factors. First, we need to find the gradient, the slope of the line. And to find that one, we should find first the average in the first full season, the first year, and the average for the second year. Yeah. Here should be approximately the So, so at least we would try to find the average values for, for each year and then find, calculate the gradient as the difference from one full year, one full season, 
to another one. So here, in the initialization procedure, we start by calculating the average in year number one, the V1, which is one divided by the sum, uh, no, divided by n, multiplied by the sum for the number of periods, which can be seen as i is equal to minus 2n plus 1 up to minus n, which means that if you are now in period number 0, and you have 4 periods in a full year, this will be the indexes from minus 7 and up to minus 4 for that particular demand. Similar for the second year, 1 divided by n multiplied by the demand is the same index value here i from minus n plus 1 and up to 0 which will be in a 4 period year be the indexes from minus 3, minus 2, minus 1 and 0. So these are the average demand for each full season, for each full year. And in Winter's method, you should always use two years of demand to initialize this uh, procedure. Then we can easily find the initial value of the gradient, G0, will be the average per period of the difference between these two. V2 minus V1 divided by n. This will now be the gradient of the trend line based on two years of, of data. Difference between the average in, in, in uh, season one and season two. And divide by the number of, uh, uh, of periods to get the slope for one period. Uh, and then we can also easily use uh, the gradient to find the value of the S, the series value, because the value of the series will be the end point of the line. Then we should use the average for the second year and continue the line until time zero with the same slope. So here the S zero will have the V2 value plus the newly found gradient here, g0, multiplied by n plus 1 divided by 2. This will continue the line until time number 0, and find the series value, which is the end point of the line. And we also should have a formula for updating the seasonal factor, which is the C for period T, phone as the D, the demand for that period, divided by the average for the year of that period, VI. So the index number I here will be either 1 or 2, dependent on if this season is in year number 1 or in year number 2, then we should subtract and we should subtract n plus 1 divided by 2 minus j where j is the index of the period in the season. So if you have period 1, 2, 3, 4 in season number 1, the j, uh, j parameter will uh, uh, then represent the period number and the i parameter will represent the year number or the full season number. And this should now be multiplied by the gradient. So this is a way to 
find the seasonal factors for all the seasons in the two full periods we are uh, uh, we are using for initialization this uh, uh, method then we should find the average between the same periods so for find uh, finding the c um, yeah let's use uh, one example here for finding the c1 the, uh, the seasonal factor for period number 1 we should use the seasonal factors for the same periods in the two previous years uh, which then will be found by c of minus 2n plus 1 plus c of minus n plus 1 divided by 2. This could be, if you are talking about months, this will be January in the in two years ago and January last year. So what is important here? To calculate the uh, the seasonal factors, you should find the average of the values, the seasonal values formed by this formula for the same season or, or the same period as we are talking about. And at last we should also normalize the seasonal factors to make sure we should adjust them to make sure that the seasonal factors will add up to the same number as we have number of periods. This can be found by normalizing um, found by saying that the, the cj should be equal to the cj divided by uh, divided by the sum the total sum yeah, what the index are using here from 1 and up to n if you now are talking ab uh, talking about the number of uh, uh, of seasons and multiplied by by n this uh, i will show an example on, on this show how to normalize but be because we need to make sure that the sum of the seasonal factors will be exactly the value of n so this was uh, a mathematical uh, uh, representation of, of that fact. Now I will show one example on this Winters method. Uh, you have one example in the book, which is example 2.8, which I will not present, but you should try to study it yourself. And I will rather show the solution of problem 2.35 on page 89, which uses data shown on page 84. This is a product which is sales of tennis shoes uh, which is a well rather typical seasonal product probably tennis shoes you will sell more of them in the summer than in the winter and we should now try to use this example to first initialize winter's method and then we should try to update the values of the three uh, factors here, the series, the gradient, and the seasonal uh, factors when we get some new data. But the first part by using Winter's method is to initialize this by using uh, historical data for two periods. And then when the method is, is running, we can easily update it for new each new data point by using the formulas here, and then also update the, the forecast. Okay, I think we take a break now, continue in 15 minutes, and then I will show this example on this particular problem described in problem 235 in, in the textbook. But then first, a short break.